Welcome, Welcome. to Shade, Shade in the in City. City. I'm Trees. It's Nels. And today we're jumping right back into Before the 90 Days. I think we are on episode, damn, seven or eight now. I can't, I ain't even going to see a lot of y'all act like and tell y'all no, because I don't. I've lost track. I've, it's I've, episode seven. I have been too tied up. Well, thank you, Nails, for clarifying. That's why you have a co-host. You're appreciated. <laughs> um, so, yes, we're going to get into it. But I am more excited to get into the tea that I've heard about the whole before the 90 days franchise. So I will definitely be dropping some of that alleged tea. Um, so anyway, <laughs> guys, let's get into it and let's get shady. and Kimbali and Kimbali. we start off they are leaving the resort now I will say as much SHIT as we talk about Usman and this old white lady being here he actually took her out to what was it Stone I'm saying Stone Mountain but that I'm thinking I thought, that's he, said, I thought he just said Old Town in Zanzibar no, he named it. It was like Stone something. It was Old Stone or Star. I want to say Stone Mountain, but I feel like Stone Mountain is in Georgia. And it ain't got nothing to do with Africa. It is in Georgia. Okay. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe no, I he said understand. Stone Town. That's what he said. Stone Town. Oh, Stone. Oh, okay. That's what I was going to say. Maybe I can yeah, he said Stone Town. I thought he said Old Town. I thought he said Old Town at first, too. Okay. So it's Stone Town in um, Zanzibar. Yeah. So they um, go. Oh, go ahead. He said, he said that, you know, it's like, like really ancient there and you know they haven't done any renovation so he thought it would be romantic so he is actually trying i i agree with trees for somebody who's not because to me i just feel like he's not interested i mean even i feel like even if he was just using her to put this much effort into somebody you're using i mean he wanted to make it seem like you know he worked that uh that laptop that macbook and i guess so playstation you know, I ain't mad at it. Take me to go walk around so we can go shop. I guess you know. That's a. I definitely did think that. I definitely did think that. I was like, oh, maybe he just want her to pay for everything. But it definitely didn't come off like that. Um, they go. You see, we see them visit like a little cute hat shop, and he finds him a cute little fedora. And you know, she's crazy about Michael Jackson, so she has to bring that up, of course. And yeah, I we can just. We can fast. He's like, he's like, she's obsessed with Michael Jackson. He's like, I like Michael Jackson too, but she's crazy. Like the hat did not look like a Michael Jackson hat. It's just a fucking fedora. But the real highlight of this scene is that once they're done and they do their hat shopping, Kimberly pulls him aside and says, I feel like you should give up your room and give it to one of your team and that you should stay in my room. Usman says, well, that was never a part of plan. You knew what it was when you came over here. And Basically, we said, I wanted to wait till we, we are not boyfriend. boyfriend and girlfriend. And I love how Usman was like, it kind of makes me feel like you just trying to grab something. So if this don't work out, you could just say, at least I got some dick. That's basically what you're trying to do. Mm-hmm. I said, well, damn, Usman. Well, damn. Talk about wanna... reading a person. He just don't want to fuck her. We know that, but he's I can not appreciate, I can appreciate his excuses. Because he got the woman all the way to Africa. I told you what the bitch should have spent her money on. Okay. She, what true. she really should have spent her money on. Okay. She did all of that for some dick and look. Look. Lonely white look, pay for the honeymoon suite and sleeping by a damn self. Like I said, lonely white female. Um, so Gino and Jasmine, you know, um, we're back at their place. And I guess, you know, there's still, you know, a little bit of turmoil. You know, he's upset that she's been lying about taking birth control. And she's still upset about the the colors. The colors in the house. In the house that she don't like by the the bitch ex-wife. Okay. 
So, you know, basically she lets him know, look, my friends are in town and um, my divorce is finally final. They throw me a party. Mm -hmm. So, and you're not invited. Ready. It, basically, she's getting ready and she's like, there's no men allowed. You're not invited. Apparently, they threw this uh, party in the same hotel because they wanted to go to a club, but you know, there's a uh, curfew in Panama. Because of City. COVID. Exactly. So, she kicking back, you know, chilling with her girls. I was like, okay, you know, a little chill, little vibe, everybody drinking, talking. You know, she's telling them about the uh, situation that her and Gino was um, arguing about. Mm -hmm. And they're like, bitch, you crazy. That's like, one she, thing I could appreciate her friends for. And I was telling Nels, I said, at least her friends know she crazy. Her friend, um, the young lady here on the top, right all the way to the right next to jasmine i don't remember her name but she said jasmine is crazy jealous she was like she's jealous as hell and she was like and basically it, unless she grows up or he's just willing to accept it it then they're probably going to have issues later on so it's starting to make me believe that and I'm not saying this is the reason for your divorce, Jasmine, but it's starting to make me believe that maybe you're the problem. She she said she said that he invoked demons inside of her. And if you could have saw the friend's face, like, yeah, like that's what's happened. She she even said, you know, I have, you know, I'm difficult to deal with. And they agreed. You're difficult. Everybody, so like everybody in the room collectively was like, yeah, no. Like we praying so for So I don't so according to Jasmine, if I'm not mistaken, she did say that he cheated. That her she did say that her husband I cheated. believe I'm, she her ex I'm gonna say cheated, but if she was already believe, crazy. Maybe he was trying to find a way out. <laughs> yeah, like I'm I mean, so but you know how sometimes when you're dealing with something on an emotional level, like I'm not excusing it, it can push you to do certain shit. Like if you're gonna constantly accuse me, accuse me, accuse me, and I'm not doing shit. Why don't I just give you a reason to feel fucking insecure and all the shit that you said I was doing? Why don't I just go do it? Well, that part with her crazy, with her crazy jealous ass, um, her friends invited a stripper. I ain't gonna lie. He was dressed up in like army fatigues. I was like, hope. Yes, okay, we see that. We see that on the, uh, on the right there. And Miss Jealous ass ain't back down. Jasmine, she ain't back down. She's like, you know, I feel bad, but this is my first time with a stripper. It's my divorce party. And, you know, we're just dancing and having a good time. While Gino is up in the room packing, packing him up for a trip for that you booked with his money. Get away. Bitch. Bitch. Now you know motherfucking well. You just snapped that nigga's neck. Exactly. You wrong. You know better, baby. Sorry, you wrong in this one. You 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 know better. Because if that was Gino, you would have had you would have had it out for him, and that was super wrong. Um, but this now, is how Brandon, you can make it up to me. Let me tell you something. I couldn't have been Gino because I'd have been like, look at look look. This is how you can make it up to me. Mm -hmm. You can give me this two thousand dollars back from this trip that you booked. Oh. So, Y'all, we get to the scene, and first, I I know I told y'all I was gonna drop a little tea on y'all, and we're going to um we're gonna just say R.I.P. Elena because you ain't got no job. No, allegedly, um, Miss Elena has lost her job, um, based off of some really racist remarks that I'm not going to repeat. Um, I'm sure it's been pulled off of Twitter by now, but I do think that you can go to Reddit and some other sites. And I know some other YouTubers have been covering the story. Um, but apparently a couple years ago, or even a year ago, um, she she said she was going to the end party. I'm going to just leave it that, that there. Already, that should be too much for you. Um, now, I was really disappointed in hearing this. And as I was filling Chanel in on the story, I felt as if it was really crazy for someone who has a disability that they cannot control, they can't do anything about it. They were born like this. And I understand that she's from Russia. Um, and I understand, again, 
she's she has disabilities. Um, but this is something you were born with. So I think that you would have more respect or understand or be able to empathize with black people. Cause this is how we were born, right? Like we didn't, God didn't give us the opportunity to be like, pick a race, pick one, close your eyes and pick it. Like, no, that didn't happen. Um, and so for you to make derogatory and insensitive comments, um, there has been a lot of backlash towards TLC and allegedly um, they are removing her from the before the 90 days franchise because of those comments. Um, so this might be one of the few times that we actually see her again. So that's why I said RIP, people, because uh, I don't know if we're going to see her. We might see her, I think, one more episode. I've heard that they're shortening her scenes with Caleb. Um, and I can't even defend you because I don't even understand how you got how you got to this place where you felt like you were better than somebody. All right, so we get into Caleb and Alina. They sit down at dinner with Elijah. It's his last night. He's getting ready to leave them so they can have some alone time and really figure out what they're doing. Um, basically, to keep it short and sweet, they're sitting down. They are wanting to play, or Elijah suggests, playing a game. Well, well. Nels, I'll let you get into. Yeah, let's talk about that awkward. They had an awkward moment uh, the night prior. Um, apparently, you know, Caleb and Alina, they were getting it in. and um. Elijah walks in because he had a key and Caleb wants to get this on the table. Like, sir, why did you walk into our room? Oh, I, I needed to get my brush. Okay. But why were you staring at me? Uh, you know, I was checking out your body. He does Like really? Like, sir. like, you know, most men would be like, Oh no, I was just in shock or something. Exactly. No, said, no, I was checking out your body. Like what? How fucking awkward. I ain't gonna lie, I love Elijah's honesty. <laughs> oh, talking about awkward. Elijah, so, I love his honesty, but he couldn't be my friend, but we'll get into that. So Elijah decides, you know, that they should play um, a game. Never have I ever. And, um, you know, there's some questions asked. And basically, I think he asked uh, uh, who, who has slept with more than 100 women. And apparently Caleb, you know, takes a drink and because um, apparently he slept with more than 100 women. Then um, Alina asked um, who has who's had a threesome mm -hmm. or I've never had a threesome. Right. Then Elijah and his messy ass nigga. Who is keeping a secret from their partner that they've known more than 13 years? Not me. Elijah, you're a messy motherfucker. I really liked you, but we'd have to fight. I, me and Nell talked about that. She was like, I said, if you ever did that to me, if you ever threw me under the bus in front of somebody that I'm trying to pursue or my dude, like that, that would never, that's all bets are off. All bets are fucking off. If it's one thing that I was, tell me, it's loyalty. It's loyalty. That is my number one. Shit. If you're going to be my friend, if you're going to be my dude, if you're going to be in, if you're going to have a relationship with me, loyalty <laughs> comes into play. And yeah, that shit there was, that was crazy. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Basically, you know, Elijah is explaining, oh, well, the reason why he did it is because, you know, he leaves tomorrow and she won't have anyone to push her to tell him, bitch, that ain't your business. For all you give a fuck, or for all you should give a fuck, is you shouldn't give a fuck whether she tells him or not. Who the fuck is your loyalty with, nigga? Exactly. When she comes back home crying because she's single, who is your loyalty to? I don't know what his motive was. I don't know if he I don't actually did. Like, Maybe because he likes seeing you know, his body so much. That's I don't what I'm know. saying. Maybe he likes seeing his body. Um, maybe, you know, he wants to lean into his stuff. I don't know what his motive is. But, but you know, then Elijah decides to push the issue about, you know, like, what are, what are you guys doing? And Caleb is like, well, I don't know. 
the fuck? After finding out this bitch been holding a secret for me for God knows how long. And, you know, I've known this bitch for 13 years. We ain't discussing no moving forward. We're going to stay right the fuck here till I find out what the fuck it is. And I decide whether I want to move forward. And Alina didn't like that. But, um, you know, Caleb is, I, I feel like he's pretty emotionally mature. So he was able to finagle his ass right out of that shit. And he was just like, look. She was like, you're using that as an excuse. He was like, it's a very valid one. Bitch. The fuck you been lying this long? Our 13 years didn't go into account then. Okay. When it was time for you to tell me, I said, oh, okay, Caleb, you got a rebuttal for every goddamn thing. No, but I, I appreciate Caleb in this moment because, yeah, but you've been lying to me and now you're trying to push me against the wall and have me make decisions, future decisions, and I don't even know what the lie is. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. I'm good at arguing, right? And get my point across. That's not a motherfucker I want to be in an argument with. Okay, he would win. Caleb is quick on his feet. He He's would win. On his own. Look, I'd be like, but no, but you know, you're using that as an excuse. Nigga, he, look, he shut shit down. She had nothing left to say. Nada. We have Memphis and Hamza. And, you know, they're getting up, getting ready to go to the embassy so they can, um, you know, apply for their paperwork so they can get married. They basically need approvals to get married. So they're going to the embassy to do it. Um, they're packing up. They've decided that they're going to stay in a hotel because I think it's what, two? Is it two hours away? Mm -hmm. I believe. Um, and uh, Hamza makes a statement like, well, if we can't get a car, we'll just take the bus. I was so with Memphis on this, like, no, she's not hopping on a bus. We're not doing. It's she's COVID. not hopping on a bus. Um, it's COVID. I have all my shit. Yeah, and it's two hours away. Who the fuck wants to ride a bus for two hours? Hamza. I mean, then you got me fucked up. Again, that goes to show his age. And, and, and almost like, because I feel like any man that should be like the fact that you got to call another man for now, granted, I don't know how Uber is out there, but the fact that you got to call your homeboy to transport you everywhere, that's a problem. First of all, First she's like, yeah, a figure it out. It's a problem. She's like, figure it out. You need to find us a ride. And I'm assuming the way the conversation went, it seems like the friend was already going um, to where near the embassy was, which he got lucky with that, especially since it's two hours away, unless that's like some normal shit to be traveling two hours to get somewhere. I don't, I don't know. Um, so apparently the embassy closes at five and, you know, she's like, all right, tell the front to come on. Cause we don't have much time. The friend gets there and he says he forgot his insurance papers. I don't know. Maybe that's the thing there. Um, so he has to go back home to get them. And, oh, it'll take him, well, he said five minutes, but, you know, Hamza, he was more realistic. He was like, uh, 15, 10 minutes, okay? An hour later, they still there, haven't left yet, and Memphis is pissed the fuck off. She's like, I'm pissed, I ain't sad. Nigga, if you'd have planned better, we'd have been gone. Like, and the friend is just in there like, and I'm thinking like, the friend is so nice because he was willing to take y'all motherfuckers for free as far as I know, um, two hours away and y'all holding him up because he still got to go because he was already planning to go without y'all. So um, the fuck, bitch, can I get a thank you or something? Because so now she's talking and about taking a taxi. He know that he thinks Memphis nags a lot. That's what irritated me. He did. He said that she didn't, he didn't like her attitude. Uh, I understand both sides. I understand. No, I don't because she's dealing with a man child. And yes, that's her fault. She should know that. She should know that. Um, she's like, he didn't plan. He should have planned better, whatever, whatever. I agree. Right. But with the nagging and shit, I don't feel like it should have been done in front of the front, especially since the friend was the um, one giving the ride. Was, exactly. Was being courteous enough. And y'all are still holding him up with your fucking attitude. That part. Your shit is still in the trunk. You're sitting outside my car arguing, and I still have to go out there. So, 
I mean, I understand both sides. I don't know why Memphis picked up this man child. We are she already know he lied about his age. Um and unfortunately his maturity level shows his age. Maybe the ones that are young and think that they're mature for their age that are really not even their mind frame is not even on their age. It's like it's ridiculous. And I think Memphis even says, like, I feel like I'm getting another child. That's not what I want to sign up for. So the fact that you're rushing him to go do this paperwork for the certificate for him to legally be your husband, bitch, look at the, what, where's the red flags? Where are the red flags? Bitch, okay. I was pulling it out. If you didn't see him when he was back in the U.S., bitch, you should see them now. And you should not be the one rushing. You should be like, you know what? It was a great trip. I'm glad I got to see your culture you know and glad I got to see that you come quick. But deuces, nigga, I'm out of here. All I'm going to say is. God works in mysterious ways, right? I don't, know how many, I don't know how many signs, red flags <laughs> that he can give you, how many road bumps he can throw in the road for you to realize that this ain't for you, boo-boo. Now, Memphis, she driving right past the motherfucker. Right. Over She's the like riding through the stop signs. She's she running over them speed bumps. Just All right, y'all. So we see Ella. And she is meeting up with her. I don't remember the names, but we see her friend that we've seen. It's uh, Corby, Corby and Pow. Look at nails on her job. Because, you know, it. I can't remember names. So I got to write it down. But Corby and Powell are sitting talking to her because Johnny is hesitant, even though his visa was denied to Singapore, he is, and they decided that he was going to try to go through Dubai. And with Dubai, he doesn't need anything else. He can come straight to America. Mm -hmm. And he still doesn't want to come. He's concerned about the Delta variant. And as I was telling Nails off camera, Lord knows, thank God that was before the Amarion, or he really wouldn't have bring his ass over here, okay? Um, because everybody got that shit. So, except me, I'm just saying. But point being is that I think it's crazy that her friend is married to another Asian man, and he gives her the perspective, and he said, Well, is it really that or is it his parents? And I said, Ooh. And he was like, you know, Asian families like to stay together. They like to, you know, they're very big on family. And he was like, maybe he's not telling you that his family don't fuck with you. Well, not even that. He also said, maybe they want him to marry an Asian girl. And if you remember last episode, they, they said, why can't you just find an Asian girl? But I, but I agree with you, Trace. I think um, I'm, I don't think it's the parents because I think he learned his lesson um, as far as letting the parents get involved in uh, his business. I think it does have a lot to do with his son. It's and his son. being and 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 not even and just he's that. He's the only parent. Like I could see if the mother was involved, but he's the only parent and it's the only financial support. And he would be literally quitting his job. I mean, I really feel like in order for him, I, I don't understand. Why is it that Ella can't go over there? Do we know? Because he's Ella, really- getting, Ella, can you let us know why you can't go there? As far as I know, Ella doesn't have any children. She doesn't have anything holding her back. And Johnny has a great job. And this is what supports his child. So- um, I completely understand. I completely I get think it. That's, I think that's selfish, honestly. I think that's selfish when you're in a position where you, yes, Ella would be losing things, right? Her family, her friends, whatever. This man has a whole child. It's just for a visit, though. It's just to visit. Well, I mean, eventually you would think about, okay, what is, I just think it's selfish to ask people to leave their children unless they're willing. Like you see people like, what was the one? Um, that was on, what was the one that everybody, Larissa, and she had kids, her and Colt. Oh, well, we never saw Colty, her. Colty. 
and they had kids. She had already left her kids though. When she but that's met, what I'm saying. She had, ar- she, she she had she already Colt. made the decision to leave her kids. That but, was before she met Colt though. That's what I'm saying. Her kids but, is living not. But Johnny seems like in his spare time, he's a very hands-on father. Mm -hmm. So for him to just pick up and leave, I think it is selfish for you to ask him that when you can pick up and leave. Yeah, I don't know if she mentioned why she couldn't go. Because she has to to peel some potatoes because she has to work on a farm. You and these goddamn potatoes, bitch. (laughs) You and these fucking potatoes. She's in Idaho. Is, you know what? I mean, seriously. We still going though, but I'm just saying. Also, I mean, really, it's it's financial. This money that he's making is taking care of him, his parents, and his son. He's clearly got to be making some type of money. That their money is worth more than our money over here. Because you think so, about it, he's living somewhere else and sending money. To his parents or giving money to his parents and his son, but yet mm-hmm. lives somewhere else because he doesn't live with them. He yeah. has to work inside the city. So he clearly has a decent amount of money that or just enough to do so. So to ask him to, I, I don't know. I just think it's, I think Ella is being selfish. And um, I know we've always kind of rolled for Ella, but in this moment, I think you need to put on your big girl panties. And I, didn't I think he also needs to communicate. She I think he also needs to communicate that and let her know it's more than Delta. I mean, I, I'm, I'm sure she, I don't know how much she knows, but I know she knows he has a son. I don't know if, you know, that. But that's knows. how selfish she is. She doesn't care. She's willing to let him, give me, hear me out. Ella looks at it as, well, if you come over to America, we'll bring your son over here. So she's looking at it in the Well, I'm looking at it as just a visit for right now because once you get in person, shit could be totally different. Very true. It may not turn into But that's not the way she's thinking. This is lifelong for her. Mm Mm-hmm. That's why she already said if he can't come for the visit, I'm done. I don't know. I mean, I don't know how much she knows. Because it's it's different. It's 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 a multitude of things. It's it's the son. It's the job. It's the family. Like, it's and Delta, I don't know. It's Corona. Exactly. I don't know how much she knows or how much she's aware of. But I think he needs to express that to her. You know, it's hard for me to leave my son. I also support my son and my parents, and I'm also worried about Delta. I mean. And can I but tell just, you, being honest, and I really, I really do fuck with Ella. I don't think she cares. Well, y'all, we are back to Jimena and Mike. They are on their beautiful, um, cute little vacation that they're having with themselves. And um, they're laying in bed, as you can see on the right. And Jimena lets us know that Mike is just nasty. <laughs> Jesus Christ. She goes to get some coffee. Away. Oh, okay. She, okay. She, Nails is going to put it the right way. Cause I, he's nasty. Go ahead. <laughs> so basically Mike, you know, he wakes up, he's talking about, you know, he's still thinking about the conversation they had the night before where she dated these dangerous people. Right. She got some other shit on her mind. Okay. She decides, you know what? You want to go get some coffee? He's like, no, I'll meet you later. So she finds a perfect opportunity to call her sister. And tell her when sister you see in the middle here. Exactly. Uh the when that put her out about her not having kids. Yes. Um, so she calls her sister Wendy, and you know, she's oh, like doing the names, girl. I'm so proud of you. So um she calls her and she's like, you know, shit ain't been peaches and cream. Um, this nasty motherfucker. He's like a child, basically. He throws his dirty clothes on the floor. He farts on top of me. He burps around me. And how the fuck am I supposed to deal with that? Like, it's this soon. And imagine how it's supposed to be in three to four years. Like, I can't deal with this shit. Wendy basically tells her, look, 
You got to talk to his ass. Okay. He don't know unless you tell him that he's nasty. Exactly. And sometimes, unfortunately, it takes telling a motherfucker that they're nasty for them to get it. And sometimes they don't care. I was about to say. Most people, that's like if you tell somebody why you're around them, it'd be like, girl, you need a breath mint. Right? And you, they might not be like, what? What you mean? Da, da, da. But promise they won't come around you again and not check their breath. You got to put it in their head. Mm-hmm. Some niggas just don't care. Especially after after three to after three to four years, they usually don't give a fuck. Um, but I can understand her point. Her point is, it's this soon. We're still in the honeymoon phases, and technically not even there yet. We're still in the trying to impress each other phases. And if you're on top of me, trying to kiss and love on me, and you farting and shit, nigga. But um, long story short, you know. Um, I kind of felt some type of way about Jimena when she said it, because you literally just told him that, you know, you dated a, a, a hit man, a hit man and, you know, you ba- like you just, you bitch, you had a lot of shit going on. Okay. And you worried. You can't, about have, this man kids, you can't have kids. You dated a hit man. Um, and you worried about like this. Every, it this sound like all your kids was a one night stand. It's not a good look, come in. It's not a look good look. But you know what? What's the word Mello um used to use? She's the new hotness. Oh yeah, she's the new hotness. She's the new hotness. And bitch, let me say something. He want her. Okay. Yes. He yes. want her. You willing to accept all her shit. All right. Bitch, she don't want to be smelling your farts. She don't want to be smelling your burps or hear it. She don't want to be cleaning up your dirty clothes. Nigga, grow the fuck up. Okay? Grow the fuck up. Clean up behind yourself, you nasty motherfucker. And I think he thought because I was getting, and I hate to say it, because I'm getting a wife or because I'm planning on trying to make her my wife, I can be this person. I can, and I can see why it's an alarm. It's an alarm for her because she's like, we it's too soon. he only been here for a few days and he already doing that so imagine if i did become his wife it should be totally acceptable the thing is it's like it's you're doing all of this already so if you feel like this shit is okay i can only imagine the shit you're hiding for three to four years down the line and that then you're gonna feel comfortable doing nigga i might be washing your clothes and see some fucking skin marks nigga if you're doing some nasty shit like this, I can only can imagine. say something about like, she doesn't feel like she should wipe, uh, she doesn't feel the need to have to wipe his ass. And I was like, I don't know why, but when she said that, it gave me the vibe of when she picked up his draw, she did see skip marks. You know what? And if she did, Jimena, I praise you for not wanting to put his ass out, but I'd have been like, look, what the fuck is this? Bitch, you don't want to be embarrassed? Don't do it. Oh, shit. If you don't want to be embarrassed, don't do it. So, Benjamin is headed to Peru to uh, go see his boo thing, Mahogany. Um, he, so, I, you know what? I can see why the ex-wife could be a little pissed off because he said this is the um, best romantic and spiritual connection he has ever had. Sorry. I don't think you are in a place to be comparing, especially when, you know, you have a, uh, we're going to call her bitter, bitter ex-wife. Um, but it sounds like she got reasons to be better. Okay. Um, anyways, um, he let us know that he got two separate rooms. In Lima, Peru, which I thought was super sweet, super thoughtful, basically letting her know I'm not trying to force you into anything because, you know, a dude travels, yeah, if I'm traveling all this way to see you, most men is like, I'm, I'm staying in the same room with you. Exactly. At, at Look, we, see, we see how, uh, what's the name is, uh, Kimbali. Kimbali. Um, but the fact that he, he 
got them two separate rooms and he's like, you know, um, that he feels like you have to wait for the best sex. Like it's, I don't know. I thought that was super sweet. I thought it was super respectful. Um, it doesn't sound like it's something she asked for. It was just something that he thought of. So um, I'm loving Benjamin for that. Um, looks so his son Elijah. Look at you. Elijah came to pick him up and take him to the airport. And you know, basically Elijah's like, you know. I'm worried about you. Are you going to come back with your kidneys and your organs? Why people always say that when you leave the country? And I, I, feel, I feel like it's fucked up because they only say it when you're going to like South American countries. Mm. Like Brazil, Peru, like they, Colombia, like they only say that when you're going to, nobody says that when you go to Mexico, that are you going to come back with your organs? Well, no, people say that when you go to Mexico. Oh, okay. No, people say that when you go to Mexico. Um, you know, they'd be like, oh, is the cartel going to, I don't know, put something in your body and make you traffic yourself over here? I mean, you know. Well, that's different. That's drugs. That's not bodily organs. That's not motherfuckers. I mean, you know, they, you know, there's other shit that goes on. <laughs> you know, I'm just saying. Um, allegedly, basically, Allegedly, please don't come for us, cartel. Go ahead. <laughs> Um, but Elijah basically lets him know, like, yeah, you know, I care about you, you know, but I am a little bit skeptical about this bitch. And Benjamin lets him know that this is not, I don't want to say his first catfish. You know, he's been catfished before. This is not his first rodeo. And he's tried to meet up with Mahogany before. Um, for her birthday, it was a month prior. And she told him, oh, well, I guess he was supposed to be meeting the parents. They were counting down the days and the hours. And this bitch waited to the very last minute to say, no, I don't want you to come because my parents are gone. This is not giving you catfish vibes. 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 Where's your, where's your flag? Where's your flag? Benjamin, I'm gonna need you to see what it is and recognize, sir. So he gets to the airport and he gets a text from Mahogany. This bitch is good at waiting to the last minute, nigga. You know, you know, it costs to change your flights around, bitch. Sometimes it costs more to change your flight than it costs for your actual flight. Just, just throwing that out, Mahogany. Just throwing that out, okay? Um, she sends a text saying, you know my dad doesn't trust your intentions and I don't want you to come. Oh, I'm sorry. He doesn't want you to come. Um, Benjamin basically, you know, gives her some bullshit and he's like, bitch, I'm, I'm hopping on the plane. I bought this ticket. I didn't you get did it this last month. <laughs> and so therefore I'm getting on this plane. Basically we leave it at a God's hands. And he never got a response back. Let's hope he gets to meet up at the airport. Because the, the chances are looking very slim tonight. Jasmine and Gino again. And Jasmine is litty, right? So she's like, and this is what I can appreciate. Because this is so me as, I don't know if I'm as crazy as her. I might be on the spectrum. <laughs> but um, Not but the spectrum. On the spectrum. But I would get twisted. And be like, I just want to see my baby, da, 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 whatever I can. So that would be so me. That would be so me. So she runs and takes her friends after the stripper leaves. And she's like, yeah, let's go. Let's go see Gino. I want some pee pee. Let's go. Let's go. I'm going to take advantage. And I'm, that would be me. That would be me. Um, and so basically her friends meet Gino. He's excited because he's like, well, I'm happy she wanted to include me in the celebration. It sucks that it's the end of the night, but I appreciate it. They're clearly lit, but okay. Um, Gino, I'm gonna just tell you, just be happy that she came back to you, okay? So, so then um, basically- Everybody want a wife a stripper. She's not the stripper. I know, but you're saying be happy that she came back to you. Oh, I'm just saying be happy she came back. You know the one paying her bills. 
Well, that's true. That's true. And so basically she comes back and her friends are like, you know, and there is their meeting hanging out and they show him the video of the stripper, which can I just talk about, does nobody have any real friends on the show? Hmm. No new friends, no new friends. You know, that's the song I thought of. Like who but was are it the friends? friends? That you can, they Which friend was it though? Was it the friend? It wasn't the friend that was that knew her so well, was it? The little blonde haired chick that's right here, and she was like, "Police for a bad girl." Oh, it yeah, wasn't not, that yeah. girl. No, she's probably a new friend. All I know, we is, know how I feel about new friends. Yes, all I know <laughs> is one of her her supposed friends. That's why you gotta be careful who you call friends put her ass out all the way out and showed him the video, the stripper grinding on her, his stuff all in her face. Just, he, he was giving, grind on me. Relax. Her actual friends, her actual fr- friends tried to help her out. Oh, it's normal. It's normal. Like, relax. It's no, okay. but if, if it's normal, if it's normal, Gino can do you know, it. Jasmine can't go H crazy, and we know that. If it's not normal, right. you don't need to say that it's normal. Regardless of what you feel is normal, it's about respect and the respect that she demands from him, but she doesn't give. Let's talk about that. Mm. So that's all I'm going to say. I'm going to leave it there, and Gino's clearly upset. And I think he breaks it down for her the same way that I broke it down for y'all. Yes, Jasmine has a red flag now outside of her crazy. A, a few, a, a few, a few. But Jasmine definitely has a red flag because, boo, you do not practice what you preach. You want him to run around and act like the son of a preacher, man. But yet, again, you in here with the pretty Ricky. What You know what would have pissed me off, though, as Gino? The fact that I have to say that, the fact that I have to put it in your perspective, what would you have want me to do that? What if a fine ass bitch was rubbing all up on me? Oh, I feel so bad. I'm sorry. Why do you have to do that? Bitch, you know that had he done it, you'd have felt some type of way. You just got finished talking about how crazy you were. Not even, here's my thing that messes me up. And this is why I don't want to believe I'm that crazy because he doesn't even have to do it. She just has to think that he did it. He don't even. He don't. It don't gotta go that far. He can't even talk to nobody. He can't even pick up his food order without you wanting to see the girl, know where he at, check in. But he lets you go out for a whole night, and then you got a stripper pop up. If you, I, I, from somebody who's a little bit crazy, if you gonna have those rules, you have to respect them when you set them, and you have to. The same applies to you. Yeah. This reason. So Johnny and Ella. Um, Ella is talking to Johnny and they're basically trying to figure out, you know, what he's decided, what he's going to do. They're having a discussion and he's basically like, mm, I don't think it's a good idea for me to come. And she's like, you know, it's two weeks away. You know, he's vaccinated. He has a hazmat suit. And he's over here worried about hospital bills. <laughs> Sir, you worried about U.S. hospital bills? Look, I was, okay, hold on. Can I just say, I'm the one that pointed that out. I was like, G- he, I was about to call him Gino. I said, Johnny over here worried about American hospital bills. I don't know how I work over in China, but boo. You be all right as long as you don't hit your credit. You and they fall off for seven years, boo. You but Johnny, you better bring your butt over here. A hospital bill is not an excuse over in America. Ain't nobody taking you to court. Ain't nobody, ain't nobody doing that over no hospital bill, Johnny. You good. You good. Come on. And over. really, if you live in another country, not something about the sitting they might write it off saying they can't reach your ass. You know, so he's worried about the US cases increasing and his chances being higher. Um, that he might catch something and uh, apparently the hospital bills. But you know what? He did make a good point. Um, 
Basic, I mean, so we know that if Johnny leaves and comes to the U.S., he plans to quit his job. So I don't really know how great this point is. But he basically said, if he gets sick, who's going to support his family? He has nobody. But my thing is, if you plan on coming here anyway and quitting your job, who's going to support your family then? I think he took a, um, what is it called? A sabbatical? Leave it. Okay. Or a oh, so he's, absence, something like that. So, yeah. So he's not quitting his job. I think he has a job to go back to. He just has this time off to see what he wants to do. But I don't think he's. Oh, that's Johnny. Johnny comes off too smart to me to do that. That's like unpaid. Yeah, it's probably like an unpaid leave, unpaid absence. Mm. Okay. I mean, at least he has a job to come back to, I guess. Um, So basically, you know, Ellis' point is, you know, people travel to other countries and they're fine. Bring your ass over here. I don't understand, you know, um, what the, what the fuck the holdup is. Is it your parents? Do your parents not like me? Like, you know, are they having some reservations about you marrying a white girl from the U.S.? And Johnny's like, no, 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 no. It's I think I think they like you. I think they like you. But Johnny don't give a fuck. He has made it clear he is not letting his parents. Interfere in his relationship moving forward anymore after his divorce. And I feel you, Johnny. I wish you would have known, you know, ahead of time. You would have known better ahead of time. But you know. You live and you learn. Exactly. So Ella, you know, she didn't tell Johnny, but you know, she told us in the uh confessional that basically if Johnny doesn't make it over, she feels like she may need to move on. Ella, where are you moving to? She moving to another Asian man that like white women. Well, good luck with that. All right, guys. So before we get into the scene, I know I said I was dropping a little tea here and there. It's around everywhere. Just scattering the tea, allegedly. So the word on the street. Oh, let me let me make sure y'all can hear me. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? I had the mic. We can hear you, boo. We can hear you. So allegedly, the T is that Memphis is pregnant currently, y'all. Why it look like when you said that you was hiding in the bushes? <laughs> you said. <laughs> but yeah, so word on the street from Reddit, allegedly, is that, you know, this is where they love to talk about 90 Day Fiance. They don't really talk about them on like on real publications for real like that but maybe people but it's like love stories this is this is just a messy story so apparently um Hamza is the one that let out the information that Memphis is pregnant by Hamza I didn't get that that that, it never finished so I don't know if it's by Hamza if I don't know if that's what the cliffhanger dun 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 so but just to drop that little tea on y'all, which would, I don't know, for me, I don't know. It's get into the scene, girl, and then I get into her. Go ahead. Um, so we we're Jesus Christ. I you just off by the homeboy. Well, the friend, the, the friend finally gets the paperwork and um they are on their way to the embassy. Um, uh, but they're gonna stay the night in Tunis. Uh, but by the time, because by the time, um, they get there, the embassy is going to be closed. So, you know, she's got an attitude the entire way, you know, she feeling some type of way he ain't playing better, but when they get there, Hamza apparently redeemed himself because he put them in a nice little beautiful hotel. No, y'all, this was the hotel. This was a loft. Okay. This was, I mean, upstairs, downstairs, like. I was telling Nails, it was giving, I'm trying to think about where I've stayed, where it was a lot. It was giving Airbnb. And the thing about it is most hotels you don't see, unless it's like super, super, it's, you don't see where you have two floors and your bedroom's upstairs and you have a downstairs. Like it was literally a whole apartment. Um, so it was giving Airbnb. That's what it was giving, but it was nice. And Hamza did his thing. And I was like, I don't know where he got the money from, but I'm going to mind my business. Cause I'm I'm a drink my water, mind my business, and um, you know he was doing it, he was giving, and um, I love. I even told Nels, I said, I guess maybe we're wrong, maybe we owe you guys a retraction, be based off of 
our, I don't want to say ignorance because we just didn't know, but that's what ignorance is. Um, but I thought they couldn't stay in the whole same hotel room together where they were. So this was shocking to me that they were even able, even by the hotel staff. Um, and as Chanel or Nails gets more into the story, they even had drinks at one point, which I didn't even think was like acceptable. But go ahead, girl. Well, we did see, you know, two other shows where um, they couldn't stay in the same hotel room. And it was um, 90 Day. It, it was, it was, and it was, and it was, a, it was a Muslim Amazon. country. And I forgot who else it was. It might have been a. Uh, but then also Brittany, Brittany, no, 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 Brittany and um, her dude. Um, oh, they went out. The other boy, I can't remember. Yeah, his name. they went out. They went out for drinks. Um, she went out for drinks. Um, where you know, where he lives, which is another Muslim country. I just don't remember. Was it Jordan? Was it Jordan? Yeah, it was Jordan. Okay. Um, so they, I mean, they they went out to drink. I guess you know. Um, Maybe they figure, you know, if you want to be a heathen, you be a heathen, but uh, it's it's frowned upon. Who the hell knows? Okay. Or maybe, you know, maybe because it's close to the embassy, they're like, uh, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Maybe different Muslim countries do it different. I, okay. What I do know is they plan to have sexy time in this room. And the way Memphis is all excited. Yeah. All about what it's. What is it? Yazan is Britney. Yes. Yeah, Yazan. Yazan. Yes. The way Memphis is excited about this room, it looked like she ain't got no problem giving him no sexy time. She's like, look, we we need to see if, you know, maybe he was under pressure. Maybe it's because we was in the, his parents' house. I don't know. But we need to see what you can do, sir. I need to make sure you are more than a five-minute man. Okay? Um, she actually tells him not even to drink too much. She doesn't. Gave, got him all this vodka, told the bartender to give them give them more vodka, told him don't drink too much because we don't want you doing like this. He said, uh-uh, I do like this. She said, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we'll see. Um, what I didn't understand is, boo, you trying to get you some dick, but you having a whole conversation telling this man that he is um, immature. Um, and basically, if there's no marriage, there's no relationship. My thing is, why do you even want a marriage, boo? If you, you're you telling him to his face that he's immature. So and you know what you're saying. He up was for. immature. His dick don't work. Um, at what point, like, and then this is, again, you're forcing something. And God is trying to give you all the signs. And you are, God is trying to tell you something. This is what it gives me, right? So here's my whole thing is that I can appreciate Hamza because you do have women out there that are like that. Do you, do you want me or do you want the marriage? Cause it yeah. seems like you just want marriage. You don't care who is to, how you get it. You just want to be married. Exactly. And you have women out there like that. They just want to say that they have somebody mm -hmm. regardless yeah. of what circumstances of the relationship is or whatever um she lets him know i think you said that if she leaves they're no longer going to be together mm -hmm. and so, he's like he's like so what do you want you want you want you want me or you want marriage she's like i want both and then i had to tell nails i said i feel bad because i know that in our first couple reviews that we i felt like maybe it was hamza because of his religion and his culture or whatever that he was forced in the marriage topic but maybe it's not Hamza maybe it's Memphis uh, yeah maybe Hamza's cool with just having an overseas boo and she come over when she want to and hang out and chill out and I, and I told Trace yeah he probably just wanted a freak bitch from America y'all into the thick of you know, it. the girl. What 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 did he tell his friend in the beginning? Oh, the girls here are boring. I I have sexy Damn, time I didn't with even my think about girl. That, but that's true. Yeah, that's I have true. sexy time with my girl. Yeah, because her American ass is gonna send Netflix um fucking fucking you, nasty pics yeah. and do FaceTime and all types of shit while the bitches in the shower. The bitches over there ain't doing that shit. Good point. Back. We get to Usman and Kimbali. 
and it's giving very um thirsty thirsty um i was telling nails off camera it's probably so inappropriate to say but i don't care it's giving very i'm trying to trap it i said the thank god i don't believe kimberly can have any more kids because Usman would have to put hot sauce on his pillows to keep this bitch away from him. Okay? Or in his condom. He's not fucking her. That's why I said he had to put it on the pillows. <laughs> He's not even giving well, her. You said, you, said trying to, you said trying to trap him. So. I'm just saying. Um, but basically, Usman comes by. He lets her know that, yo, you know, like he's trying to show her a sense of like, I am into you, but I just, I'm trying to take it slow. And as I told Nels, I'm like, eh, I'm on the fence. But I said, it also may be his culture. Cause as we've talked about in different, different shows that we've reviewed that unfortunately, and I'm sure because he's an African man, a woman who's too willing to just bend it over and bust it open. Like he said, that's a prostitute to him. That's not, that's not the woman that he wants to be with. Um, Usman. What? But what's what's crazy to me is, I feel like um, people from a lot of different countries. That's the impression that they have of American women. So if that's not the type of woman you like, why do you keep on going after these American women? You have amazing, beautiful women right there where you live, sir. And if they are accustomed to the same customs that you are, then why do you keep on crossing the water? We already talked about this off camera opportunity. He wants to, he already said he wants to be Jay-Z. He wants to be, and this is one thing that I will give Usman. His music is not bad. And right now with Afro beats and everything being that it is, he is in the perfect time to migrate, get over here. Now, I don't know how he would look having her at the show, but we all know after six months, he's going to leave her for whatever reason. Because the opportunity really is TLC. Yeah. This is his second time being on here. Let's be honest. And he don't even want to kiss you, fuck you, touch you. So as we see the top left, he has all these pillows in between them. And she's like, well, you don't want to get closer. And this is the thing that irritated me. You really were giving super fun. Like you just he's like, no, I'm good. Like, no. And she's like, so I can't. Or am I going to get it before the trip ends? Am I going? And I was like, oh, my God. Who sits out here and begs for it like that? Who? Kimberly, get you a toy, boo. What, who does that? That was somebody who spent all their money. Somebody who spent all their money on a nigga rather than making themselves look presentable. That's so hard. I just, I don't even know what to say about her. No, I more. feel like she could have did something to the face. Like that she, she's giving rat. Gerbil, hamster. She's just. Oh God. I understand it. Uzman. I, I get it. It was dirty. <laughs> All right. So we get to Caleb and Alina, our fired cast member. Allegedly. And uh, so Alina and Caleb, it's awkward. And I was even telling Nels, when you watch the scene, they come home from dinner. Elijah goes off to his room. Hopefully he won't be sneaking upstairs later tonight to look at Caleb. And uh, as they get in bed, and I said, I really want to know, and Shade Squad, please drop down in the comments. What is, if we can find out, I'm trying to research. I need to know Caleb's sign because what he was giving me was Gemini. He switched so quick. He went from, can I help you up the stairs? Even though he really didn't want to help her. And I could tell that he really didn't want to help. Her. Um, to being on his phone and seeing her struggling to climb and get in the bed. And he didn't give a damn. He, and I know he saw it. I, we all saw it. So I know he saw it. And he didn't care. That's how pissed he was. It gives me Gemini. That's all I'm saying. So, um, and here go Alina pressing him. 
well, I just want you to make a decision. And well, for she tells him that she was living with her ex pretty much up until the time he came. And he says, was it your ex at the time? And she's like, no. So basically you were cheating on your now ex and kind of cheating on Caleb as well because y'all knew each other 13 years um, to mess with this other dude that you were living with. Um, so um, <laughs> Caleb, Caleb, I don't know, but he's- I love, so, like, can I just say Caleb redeemed himself for me? Because he's so emotionally mature, but he gave it to her. So like, Mm -hmm. no, like I'm not, he's like, how can I possibly trust you? This is what you told me. And he's like, I understand. But again, you're in my ear pressing me for a response to whether we're serious or not. When you just told me you cheated on your last man, make it make sense. She's like, but you know, well, he's like, well, this is, this is basically the reason I want to take my time. She's like, no, no, no. But I know you, you know me, we've been together for 13 years. Like we've known each other for 13 years. And he's like, yeah, but this makes me feel like, you know, what else could you be hiding from me? And the 13 years that you're referring to has no significance. If after 13 years, you couldn't come and tell me this shit, you had to be pushed to do it, which he made some um, valid points. Um, well, the points were Alina, there. I couldn't even be mad at Caleb. Alina could not. She she didn't have shit to say. What what could you say? What could you say in response to that? But you, don't, you know me. No, no, no. You can say, but you know me for 13 years. And then he's like, which I haven't known you 13 years physically. I only know what you told me over the phone. And this is what I'm, I'm here for Caleb. We see so many stupid people on this show. I am here for Caleb being emotionally honest and true that that's stupid. Okay. Now, if mm-hmm. I make the decision to continue to be stupid with you, at least I can tell you that I evaluated this stupidity before I went into it. Yeah. Most of these motherfuckers go into it knowing and just be blind as fuck. Got on rose colored glasses. Yeah, you're right. You know what? We have been talking for 13 years. So the fact that you were fucking a whole nother dude and living with him while we were talking part of that 13 years. Let's just just it didn't matter. Yeah, it it shouldn't matter to me. Um, I uh, I agree with Caleb, and he's like, you know, I need to sink further into this because I want to be able to trust the partner that I'm with when you're a thousand miles away in another country and I'm back home. I need to be able to trust you. Okay, Caleb, I'm here for you right now. So. And what I'm not here for is Lena being sad face. Oh my God. All right. So so. it is raining, um, but it looks beautiful there. Um, So Mike finally meets up with Jimena and lets her know, you know, I had a, Beautiful day plans for you, but the weather's not cooperating. So I don't know. Jimena already seemed like she got an attitude after she got off the phone. She's like, okay, so I'll go change and we meet by the fireplace. She's like, okay, I love you. This bitch ain't saying back. I don't I'm, know. She- I, unfortunately, I'm the, very much the same way. Like, I'm... Yeah, when I'm not, when I have something to give off, get off my chest, it's very hard for me to like, if I don't get it out, you're going to get an attitude. So I have to get it out. I have to. He's not, he's not blocking her opportunity to get it out. I mean, she's not like, I want to talk. And he's like, no, bitch, I don't want to talk. Save that shit for later. Or we'll talk tonight. He don't even know what the fuck going on. You just spilled all this shit to your sister. Now you got an attitude and you're giving it to him. Boom. Give him a chance to react to what you say first. Relax. So they sit that's down. What, and that's what Nels would say to me over the phone. <laughs> so um, they sit down in front of the fireplace. And she's like, you know, I have some things to talk to you about. That's, you know, been bothering me. And may fuck up this relationship, okay? First of all, you leave your socks and your clothes 
all over the walls. Nigga, fix it. We can't be doing that. She's like, then you burp and you fart and you don't need to do it in front of me. Like, I know that you do it, but you don't need to do it in front of me. And he's like, oh, okay. Like, you know, all right, I'll work on it, you know? So in a confessional, he's like, I don't understand why she's coming at me like this. You know, when I fart, it's not like on purpose. It's an accident. You thought because you, know, you gave her some money and you bought her some stuff that you could be nasty and just be who you are because that's why you probably don't have a girlfriend now and that she was going to accept it as beautiful as she is because you paid for shit. That let's just get to the it of the it. He was throwing a little bit of shade too, y'all. He was like, I mean, it's not like I went to jail or I'm running for my kids or I kill for money. Wasn't you worried about the nigga that was killing for money, bitch? You might not want to talk too much. Okay. Listen here, Lord of the Rings. Relax. Okay. Relax. Nigga. Unless Smeagol going to come and take that gun. Like it's his precious. Nigga, you best relax. Okay. Um, So basically, you know, she's like, look, I'm not about to live like I'm your mother. I ain't cleaning up behind you. I don't have to hear your your farts and or smell your farts and your burps and shit, nigga. Look, you need to stay sexy for me. The and fuck? she says, it really makes me not in love with you. I don't see this relationship going. Like she went in. She yeah. was like, I don't see this relationship going anywhere. And if you don't change. What what, what the thing is, what okay, so what got me was so Mike is in the confessional and he's like, you know, I feel like she should just accept me for who I am. And, and help what did me I with my, what did I and, but then no 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 but then he's like and help me work on my faults nigga what's she doing right now she's telling she's, you about herself she's not putting up with this shit and later on you know letting it build up and then saying fuck you she's letting you know i don't like this it bothers me and it's disgusting so you need to change if you want to further this relationship I feel like that was helpful. I feel like that was helpful to you. And I feel like it was helpful to your relationship. I don't know what the fuck he was expecting or what he meant by that. But I feel like Hamina helped you. Because any other bitch would have been like, oh, like, nigga, you just nasty. Fuck you. Bye. But that bitch want to continue to get her bills paid and her kids taken care of. So she lets you know what it is. And, um, and hopefully you can change. She helped you help her. All right, y'all. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Shade Squad, for joining us. Make sure you like the video before you head out. But guys, we have so much to get into on episode eight. It's going to get real. Apparently, Mike is going to go to Amanda's father to propose a marriage. And we see he's really not feeling that. I don't know. I'm. I Maybe Ella is going to listen to us. And maybe she's going to actually get on a plane and go over to see Johnny. Yeah, she did say that was another option. You know, cliffhanger. They ain't let us know what the fuck it was. They ain't let us know, but maybe so maybe maybe they really out here listening to our reviews, y'all. Maybe they really out here listening. But it's going to get very interesting and hopefully you will join us next week. You got to touch on Jasmine. You got to touch on Jasmine. Oh, I didn't see the Jasmine clip. What happened with Jasmine? Oh, Jasmine got a, t- a message from um uh, Gino's ex. And she lets him know, like, you know, I'm going to unblock her and I'm going to I'm going to see it. I'm going to see what the fuck this bitch is talking about. And Gino is looking very, very nervous. Into the thick of it. Into the thick of it. <laughs> well, at least they on camera so she can't kill him. Right. So, um, yeah. No, thank you guys so much for joining us. Please make sure you like. Comment subscribe and hit the notification bell and we will see you next week for another episode of 90 day fiance and catch us on thursday with our married at first sight all right guys have a good night bye bye Bye. side to side make sure you go like and subscribe front back side to side make sure you go like and subscribe